Welcome to episode three of Maddie Goes Electric, a six part series which follows me getting to grips with an electric car. Um, so far the whole thing has been a pretty straightforward positive experience. In episode one I looked at a bunch of different cars and I discovered the various ways you can finance them. In episode two the car arrived, I plugged it in at home using a three pin plug and I also found somewhere I could charge it locally. But in this episode I get a home charger. Now, now, in fairness, when most people invest in an electric vehicle, uh, because of grants available, they'll get a home charger installed before the car arrives, if they've got all of the right requirements. We'll find out about that later in the episode. Um, but I'd literally just moved house, which is why I was slightly later to the game. But I hope you enjoy this episode and look forward to the future where I will be um, finding out about different clean energy suppliers, looking into generating my own power at home, uh, taking the electric car on a much longer journey, and eventually I'll be talking to Robert about my entire experience. But for now, enjoy episode three. finally time to get rid of what we call the gas guzzler. But that was the past, this is the future and I am going electric. Hi everyone, it's Maddie and welcome back to Fully Charged. If you've been following my journey, then you know that I got my hands on an electric vehicle. I've mastered slow charging at home and I found some local destination chargers. But here's the thing, it is blooming cold outside. So actually running a cable from the car through an open window into our kitchen is massively inconvenient. And to be honest, things are getting pretty frosty. But also we don't want to charge the car at night because it means leaving our front window wide open, which just isn't practical or safe. Um, so we're not able to charge conveniently at home. So you might just say, well, go and use your local charger then. Um, there's one at a pub down the road, but most of them are actually in car parks in town. So I could, which is what I'm doing at the moment, drive into town and just, you know, park the car up and go about my business. But the truth is I don't need to drive into town. I could just cycle. So the whole thing just feels a little bit counterproductive. So with all of that in mind, we have decided to get a home charge point. For us, it is a no-brainer because we have a driveway, so that means we're eligible for some grants as well, which I'll talk about later. Um, it is an investment, but considering we're going to be here for a while and we now consider ourselves electric car owners, I don't think we're going to ever go back. Uh, why would we? And this is a good investment for us. And to help me get to grips with what charge points are all about, the lovely people at Right Charge are coming over to my house so we can find out more. This is Charlie from Right Charge who has kindly come along today to talk to me about charge points. So let's just kick things off. What is a charge point? When you switch to an electric car, mm -hmm. um, especially if you have a driveway or a garage, mm -hmm. you'll typically get a charge point installed, which is essentially just a box that goes on your wall um, that helps you to improve the way you charge your car. Um, the charge points will have a high powered circuit um, mm -hmm. installed with the installation. Um, so it makes it a lot different to just plugging into your normal home yes. so uh, socket, for example. Right, yeah. and there are multiple benefits. Um, for me personally, the reason for getting one was just that it's more convenient. Yeah. I don't have any destination chargers locally that naturally fit in with my life. I don't particularly want to go sit in a car park for two, three hours. Um, if it was at a leisure center or a supermarket, I might feel quite different differently because I'd be going there anyway but that just isn't the case as it happens and also I have a driveway I have been charging it via a three pin plug through my mm. kitchen window but it's winter <laughs> and that's cold and also it's a bit of a security issue at night time so for me it's just not working to charge it or to charge the car in that way sure um but what are some of the other reasons so compared to when you were charging with your three pin plug slow <laughs> and it's going to be like three times quicker right so um you know that means the difference between uh not really knowing if your car's going to be full in the morning mm -hmm. versus being sure that you'll have a full charge every morning which is obviously uh nice to know yes yeah, ultimate convenience right mm -hmm. if you charge your car overnight 
you're actually charging on cleaner electricity than if you were charging when you get home from work. Why? Which is cool. The way the grid works, um, so we all get home from work like six, seven o'clock. We, mm. you know, flip on all of our appliances, turn mm. the kettle on. Um, and so the peak electricity demand obviously shoots up at yeah. that time of day. Grid gets busy. Grid gets busy. <laughs> and the way the National Grid copes with that is mm. they flip on all of our gas power stations. Um, now, on the flip side, if mm -hmm. you're charging overnight, so you know midnight to seven, sort of um, roughly, um, the majority of our electricity is generated by low carbon sources, like a lot of offshore wind or onshore wind. Oh. Uh, and so you're actually over the last year, you'd be you'd be using 25% less carbon charging overnight than at peak times. That's really good to know. Um, and I guess cheaper as well is another benefit. There are electricity tariffs that are cheaper overnight. Yes. Um, you, people might be familiar with the Economy 7 tariffs, um, which are uh, still, you know, interesting if you have an electric car. Mm. But suppliers have actually started bringing out new tariffs that are specially designed for electric cars. So they, they often have shorter uh, off-peak periods, but mm. the price is much lower in those times. Mm. So if you have a charge point that can schedule your charge for that off-peak period, yeah. you, the average driver can actually save hundreds of pounds a year mm -hmm. just by charging in that off-peak versus peak time. Just to clarify, a home charge point isn't the only way you can schedule your charging to make the most of cleaner and potentially cheaper electricity rates. Some electric cars have the ability to schedule charging built into their systems. You might have seen us doing this in episode two. But I guess the benefit of a home charger is that not only can you schedule your charging, you also don't have to deal with the faff of bringing cable through your kitchen window and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Right. So I can you know, come home at three o'clock in the afternoon, I can plug the car in because I'm outside and it just makes sense to do so, but I know it's not gonna start taking electricity till those rates are lower. Right. Which is really good. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, um, Paul, the electrician, is installing the Zappi. Um, it's all going really well. And I have to say, the experience has been really easy. All I had to do was go through a comparison tool on the Right Charge website, which told me the one that was good for me. And then I got in touch with the installers and I had to take a couple of photos. Yeah. And that's kind of it. That's yeah, would you say that's pretty yeah. standard? Yeah, absolutely. That's really the typical sort of journey, you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, we built the website so that you can quite quickly narrow down your uh, perfect charger. So you, you choose your charge point. Um, we then put you in touch with the best installer for that product in your area. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, the, the standard journey is exactly as you've experienced. So they'll typically ask for two or three photos. They will just look out for anything, if there's anything sort of non-standard about your install. And these are photos of, or the photos I had to take were ones of my driveway and of my fuse board yeah, that was it yeah. just so they could work out how everything was going to fit together exactly exactly and so mm -hmm. from that they'll give you a quote mm -hmm. um, and if you're happy with the quote you simply have to book in an install date um, mm -hmm. and it takes usually around half a day okay. for the install to go ahead charge point isn't just a standard socket that's being stuck on your wall you know you do have to consider the installation it's a really smart piece of tech so how much what are you looking at in terms of costs just like when you get a boiler uh, mm. installed for example the price is typically quoted for the for the boiler plus the installation right. and that's how it's done for charge points as well okay um, so you'll find that that price uh, includes your, mm -hmm. your full installation um, and the product. And fortunately, we have uh, the OLEV grant in the UK, which mm -hmm. if you have a driveway like you do, yes. then you are usually eligible for that, for that grant. And how much is the grant? And that gives you 500 pounds off your install. Which makes a massive difference. Absolutely. Prices can vary uh, from anywhere around um, 300 to just over a thousand pounds, depending on the charge point you choose. So that's the charge point itself? That's the charge point and the installation. Uh, actually okay. and so that's usually the way that things are priced but the reason that actually it's it's quite cheap in the UK is because that's with this 500 pounds government grant applied I will say it, it is still expensive, but when you think about the benefits and if you're going to be staying at your property for quite a long time, over the course of a few years, you will eventually end up hopefully 
getting that money back or making that money back. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. if a smart charger can save you two, three hundred pounds a year, right. then quite quickly you make that, mm -hmm. that investment back. Yeah. We're talking quite exclusively here about homes with driveways. Yeah. Are there options for someone who doesn't have a driveway or a garage or anything like that? Absolutely. So um, I think there's generally sort of two solutions. If you don't have your own driveway or garage, mm -hmm. you might be in a position where, let's say you're in a block of flats that you can um, work out with the owner of that property mm -hmm. if, the, if a charge point could be installed. Um, or if you just can't have a charge point installed where you live, um, then your your best option is to look at what the public charging infrastructure is around your yeah. your property, and there are lots of people that rely and you know use it frequently yeah. day to day and have no issues. I guess what I'm getting at is that whilst here I am saying that my local destination charges aren't that convenient for me. Mm. I could 100% make do. Like, it's only because I have the luxury of a driveway that I'm doing this. Sure. If I didn't have one, it wouldn't put me off getting an electric car, is kind of my point. Absolutely. Yeah. And there are some really cool solutions out there. So, yeah. like, right next to my house, actually, mm -hmm. um, there's a company that have uh, converted the lampposts on our street. There you go. So I have a neighbour that plugs into the lamppost. Change every is happening. <laughs> All yeah. right, let's go take a look at the actual charger, then. Cool. <laughs> and here it is. There we go. And... Um, I reckon installation took about two, three hours. Yeah. So that was completely fuss free. And I actually really like the way it looks. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite proud to actually have a charge <laughs> point at the front of my house. It's not an eyesore at all. No. Right, let's have a go at actually charging the car. Um, so I'm just gonna open up the charge flap. There we go, take off the cover. Now this is a smart charger. We'll talk a bit more about that in a second, but really simple. I've got the connector here. This is tethered, which means the cable is permanently connected to the charge point. Exactly. Which is more convenient for me. Yeah. Um, but you can get ones where the cable completely disconnects, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to plug this into the car. Here we go. The lights come on. So that's good. good. That means it's working. All right, we're in business. This is making noises. Uh huh. Here we go. Right. Okay. All right. So you can see now you've got a display on the front of the charger which is giving you some information yeah um but because this is smart it's, mm -hmm. it's connected to your home internet so yeah. that means that you can actually communicate with it via your phone facts here we go all right there we go <laughs> i've already downloaded the app <laughs> uh, in general a smart charger will give you the ability to um, see the data so, mm -hmm. so see your charging sessions and how much they've cost that kind of thing yeah um, but they can also mean that you can change the settings from your phone itself so uh, let's say you know you just wanted to charge as fast as possible as soon as you plug in yeah. um, you just tell your phone that that's what you want right. or if um, you know that you're not going to need your car until the next morning mm -hmm. then you might want to tell your phone that you need it at seven o'clock and mm -hmm. so then your charger will automatically calculate the cheapest times to charge or the cleanest times to charge if that's what you ask for so useful. Yeah. and I can do that from my phone so right now it's pretty chilly outside yeah. but I can kind of <laughs> determine what I want the charge point to do from inside the house from my phone don't exactly. even need to come out here and program anything at all exactly and i will say this is really easy to use as well it's just simply it's symbols with arrows telling me where and where energy is flowing to and from yeah um, so it's great i can actually see that the car is currently charging from the house that is brilliant but of course what's what's very clever about the zappy is that if i ever wanted to upgrade and put solar on the roof yep. then that knows how to manage that right exactly so zappy is one of a few charges that's built to actually integrate with your solar panels mm -hmm. so were you to get solar you'd be able to just hook it up yeah. um, and you can just use your phone say actually just use as much solar as possible okay. and then your charger will wait for the sun to be shining wait for your solar to be generating and then it will start charging your car so rather um, than it being a sunny day and having like all of that potential electricity just flowing back to the grid. I exactly. could choose for it to get everything directed to a car instead. Exactly, and it's free. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is what happens. Yeah. You get an electric vehicle and then you get a charge point and then you get solar and then you get a battery storage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's very addictive, but this is great. So convenient. I'm very excited that this is charging up right now. Um, and thank you so much. My pleasure. I'm going to leave buddy. it to fill up. So all yeah, right. thank you. Great. <laughs> It's
So there you go, first the electric car, now a home charge point. We are slowly but surely becoming fully fledged electric car owners with all of the mock cons. Um, but honestly, the Zappi is making such a difference to our electric car lifestyle. I cannot recommend it enough. There is nothing better than being able to just pull up on your own driveway and plug the car in to get, you know, the mileage that you need. It's so easy, it really is as simple as charging a phone. A big thank you to Right Charge and to Charlie because those conversations were incredibly useful and they made the whole process an absolute breeze. Um, but not only is having the charge point convenient, it's actually just a really nice thing to have on the front of the house. I really appreciate it. We're slowly but surely getting to meet our neighbours and it's led to some really interesting conversations about electric vehicles and just generally the future of energy. So that's been, that's been really, really great. If you have been, thanks for watching. And if you'd like to continue to follow the series and find out how I get on with the electric car, then please subscribe to Fully Charged and click the bell icon to get notified about each new episode. And if you do know anyone who's thinking about getting an electric vehicle, then I would love you to share my experience with them. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye. Yes, again more lessons from energy suppliers. So if I wanted to go for someone that is claiming to have 100% renewable energy, like what are my options now? I feel like my car has been a bit of a gateway into an electric home. Take a look at the events page on our website to find out about fully charged live events happening near you www.fullycharged.show Hi everyone, it's Maddie and welcome back to Fully Charged.